Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy. In this video, I want to talk about the differences between buses, VCAs, groups, and track stacks in Logic Pro 10. Because all of these serve similar purposes for mixing, but some people are often confused on when it's most appropriate to use each of these. And in particular, there's a lot of confusion about how VCAs work, especially those who have never worked on an analog console before. Now, this information is not just limited to logic. Other than track stacks, which is purely a logic thing, this can be applied to any DAW. As a matter of fact, I'll be referencing Studio One for my explanation of VCAs. So let's get right into this. First, let's talk about buses, bus groups, bus mixes, submixes, submasters, whatever you want to call them. I usually refer to them as submixes or bus groups. So what you can do is you can route multiple channels. So I'll select all these drum tracks, and you can route their output to something other than the main stereo output. I can route them to a bus. So let's route all of these to bus one. Now when you do this, this routes the signal of all of these channels into this one bus channel or auxiliary channel or aux track. The terminology again changes from DAW to DAW, console to console. So the main purpose of bus groups or submixes like this is it allows you to sum multiple channels together on one auxiliary channel and also bus process these as a group. So you can add inserts. So maybe I wanna add a bit of stereo bus compression here at the API 2500. You can add sends from here as well. You can adjust the pan. You can adjust the volume of the summed signal and you can also write automation. So this is what I find myself using most of the time when I want to group multiple channels together and process them as a group. Note that when I pulled down the level of the aux track, that the signal still exists on the other tracks. Even if I switch into post fader metering, you'll notice that the signal coming off the individual channels is still there. Now it's no longer on the aux track because I've pulled down uh, the level of the aux track. So if I pull that back up, it comes back in again. So let me put this back on pre fader metering. So again, the purpose here is to sum the signal and be able to adjust the volume pan add plugins uh, to bus process, add sends if you want to, and uh, add automation if you like as well. Now, one new addition to Logic 10 are track stacks. So if I go up here to track, create track stack, there's two options, a folder stack or a summing stack. Let's choose a summing stack. And you'll see that it creates this nice little folder for all of our channels. But what it also does is it changes the output of all these channels to bus one and makes the input of the summing stack bus one. In Logic 10, summing stacks are identical to creating submixes the way I did previously. The only difference between a summing stack and a submix is that there's an organizational element to summing stacks, that folder element where we can organize them. So that's the only difference. Okay. So that's summing stacks and bus mixes or submixes, whatever you want to call them. Let's move on to VCAs. To create a VCA channel in Logic, simply select all of the channels that you want to be part of the VCA group, right click and select create new VCA. And what you'll see is a nice new VCA channel over here. And you'll also see the VCA assignment to that channel right here. Now, if you've only worked in the DAW world and you've never worked on a console before, VCAs are probably completely foreign to you. And by the way, I've totally heard the term submix used for VCA groups as well. I typically use the term submix for uh, summing on a bus and then VCA groups, I just call them VCA groups. So you'll notice that when I play back the audio, when I adjust the VCA volume, it adjusts the volume of all of the channels in that VCA group. See how the meters on all the individual channels are reacting to 
uh, the VCA volume change. That will only take place if you're in uh, post-fader metering mode. If I go over to pre-fader metering, this won't happen. You'll see that all of the channels maintain their metering because the metering level is coming before the fader change. So isn't this the same thing as a bus group? No, VCAs do not pass signal. Notice that there's no meter on the VCA whatsoever, no pan control, no inserts to add plugins, no sends, etc. VCA stands for Voltage Controlled Amplifier, and on analog consoles, these are a voltage control source to control the level of faders on other tracks that are assigned to that VCA group. I know Logic doesn't really visually display this as you adjust the VCA, but when you pull down the VCA fader, imagine all of these faders in the VCA group coming down as well, but keeping their relative volume positions. Studio One probably has the best visual example of VCAs, because when you adjust the VCA level, you visually see the other faders in the VCA group move as well. This same thing happens in Logic and other DAWs with VCAs. The faders just don't visually move. So like I said before, VCAs do not pass signal through them. So the outputs of the individual channels in the VCA group will stay assigned to the stereo output or whatever they're routed to. The VCA is just a control source to control them as a group. The channels are not summed together. You cannot put any effects or sends on the VCA channel. So I usually reserve VCAs for when I don't want any bus processing on the group, and I just want this to serve as a master volume control over multiple tracks. So just another side note with track stacks, if you create a folder stack instead of a summing stack, you'll notice that if I open up the mixer here, it, it organizes them into a folder, but it also organizes them into, a, it's called sub one by default, but essentially this is just a VCA. There is no difference between using a folder stack in Logic and using a VCA group. Again, kind of like with the summing stacks, the only difference is this organizational folder element, which is nifty, but from a signal flow routing perspective, there's no difference between a folder stack and a VCA, and there's no difference between using a summing stack and a bus channel for submixes. Okay, so you might be thinking, don't groups do the same thing as VCAs? Well, that's partially correct. So let's create a group here. If I select all of these drum tracks here, select my group option here and select group one. So I've assigned all of these channels to group one um, and I can move all of their faders and they all move at the same time. You can mute and you can solo them all at the same time. And these are all things that you can control over here with your group settings. So you can do things like edit them as a group, change the automation modes as a group, control volume, mute, input monitoring, pan, solo, record, arm for recording that is, all your send amounts, their color, the track zoom, whether it's hidden or not. So there's all these different settings that you can add to the groups. But let's say that I want to make a change to just one of these channels. Well, what you have to do is hit shift G to suspend all the groups, make the, change to the, the changes to the channels that you want, then go back and hit shift G again to reactivate the group, and now you can control them all and keep their relative position to each other. With VCAs, you don't have to do this. There's no suspending groups or anything like that. You can change any of the channels at any time and then go back and adjust the, the VCA to control the volume of all of them. So as far as signal flow is concerned, there really isn't a difference between controlling levels as a group and controlling levels with a VCA. There isn't a difference there. The difference is that it's just one extra thing you have to do to go in and tweak the levels of individual channels. Um, and also keep in mind that groups have all these extra features like editing as a group. If I select one channel, it selects them all. If I trim one channel, it trims them all. Um, you can apply flex time uh, to multiple channels as a group. You can do comping with uh, take folders as a group. So these are all additional editing functions that are really useful with groups. Volume changes just happens to be another one of those functions. And although from a routing uh, standpoint, it is the same as using a VCA, I just don't like having to go in and suspend and, 
and reactivate uh, groups all the time. So lately, I've been reserving groups for just editing tasks and then using VCAs for mixing tasks when I need to control multiple track levels. Okay, so just a couple of notes to wrap things up here. The first thing is that none of these are better than the other. They actually do different things in different situations, but 90% of the time, I'm just using summing stacks because the only reason I usually group together multiple channels is because I want to apply some sort of bus processing to the stack and have a master volume control for the stack. I really only use VCAs when I need to have uh, control over multiple channel volumes, but I don't want to sum the channels and I don't need to add bus processing. The most common example I can think of for this is if you find yourself working with like an orchestral score or a, a lot of just layered instruments and you want to be able to control them all. Like for example, I, if I have first and second violin, viola, cello, and bass, and then maybe I have different articulations in there too, you know, maybe you've got pizzicato, staccato, all these, all these layered string tracks, and you just want to have one fader to pull all the strings up and all the strings down without bus processing them. That's a perfect example of when you'd use a VCA. And with groups, like I said, I pretty much just use these for editing, for their editing function right now. I don't really use them for group volume control much anymore. Now, you can actually use buses and VCAs together. So let's say I want to bus together all of these drum tracks, send these over to bus one, and maybe I'll add a plugin again, maybe I'll add the API 2500 again. So there's my bus processing, but let's say that I want to have individual control over the volume of some of the groups of instruments in the drum kit. Let's say that I want my kick in, kick out, snare side, snare top, and four toms to have a different volume control than, say, the room mics, the overheads, and the shakers. What I can do is I can assign these to a new VCA, and I'll call these like close mics or something like that. Close mics. And then these three, and then the two shakers, I'm just holding command. These five here, I'll create a new VCA for these, and I'll call these like symbols and shakers. So I can have my bus processing over here, but I can also have individual volume control over the close mics and uh, the more distant mics, the overheads and the shakers. So there you're only hearing the, the close mics. And there you're only hearing the shakers and the cymbals. Let me actually go to a section where the shakers are used. So you can blend together the volume of these different groups within the drum kit, but then still have your bus processing on, on a bus group or with uh, a summing stack. And one last thing I wanna mention is that the master fader in Logic is a VCA of its own. The master fader is a VCA for the stereo output. Um, the reason why there's a master fader for the stereo output is because some mixes will actually have multiple outputs. It's, it's possible to have output one and two, output three and four, output four and five, or five and six, and all of those outputs, the, all of those stereo outputs are controlled by the master fader here. And like I said, the master fader is a VCA itself. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. I hope this helped clear up the differences between buses, VCAs, groups, and track stacks, not just in logic, but in general. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. If you'd like to help out the channel even further, you can become a patron over at patreon.com forward slash music tech help guy. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.